Hello friends, this video on separation of substances part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so till now we have learned about a lot of processes. We learned about sedimentation, decantation, condensation, evaporation, filtration, uh, a lot of them. Now uh, let us look at some uh, examples. So let us say you are given a mixture of sand and salt and you are asked to separate them. So how do you separate? How do you decide that which method would be the best one for the separation? So let's first compare these two substances. So when you think of sand, it is like they have, it is very coarse. It has visible sand particles. So tiny sand particles which are like visible with the naked eye. When you think of salt, salt is like uh, uh, more it is all the more tiny, it is very very small, each particle of salt is very small. So if, let us uh, try to see which method would suit the best. So the first method that we had learned was hand picking. Now do you think that you can pick each particle of sand or salt from the mixture? Definitely not. So hand picking is not a right option. Okay, the next method that we had learned is winnowing. So in winnowing what we did, we it, it is used to separate a mixture of two particles where one particle is heavy, the other particle is light. But in this case, if you see the particle size for the sand and that of the salt, they are kind of comparable. So they have comparable size. If you talk about the heaviness, so that is also to some extent comparable. So not exactly, but yes, to some extent. But since the particle sizes are very much similar, so winnowing would also not be a very suitable option. You think of sieving. So do you think sieving can help? Now in sieving, again, you will use a sieve. Now since both the particles are very small, so it is you are not very sure if sieving would be a foolproof process for separating the sand or salt. However, you can try it out with the sieve because it also depends on the type of sieve which you have. Maybe if the size of the sieve is such that it allows only the salt particles to pass through and doesn't allow the sand particles, then that should be fine. But otherwise, sieving also is not a very nice option. Okay, now let us try to look for more properties in sand and salt. So one very noticeable different or distinct property between the two is that sand is insoluble in water whereas salt is water soluble. So this is one distinct property between the two. So we can make use of these properties to separate sand and salt mixture. So what we do is we take a glass of water and we pour the mixture of sand and salt into it. We stir it properly and then we allow it to stand for some time. So what will happen now when we stir it, the salt will get dissolved in the water. And what happens to the sand? Sand being heavier it will and insoluble as well, so it will settle down at the bottom. So after some time, after a couple of minutes, you will see that all the sand settles at the bottom and all the salt gets dissolved in water. So basically this water which you see is nothing but salt water. So the first step of separation is being done. So you have been able to separate the sand and the salt. Now how do you get them in separate containers? So this, this method is called what? This is sedimentation. So that is what we had learned, right? Uh, the sand being insoluble and heavier, it settles down at the bottom forming the sediment. So this is sedimentation. So sedimentation has to be followed by decantation where you take out the upper layer of water. So basically now in this container, let's call this container 1, let's call this container 2. So in container 1, you will have sand and in container 2, you will have salt water. That is salt dissolved in water. So that's how you are able to get separately sand and salt. But till now, you have not got the salt. Salt is present in the dissolved form in water. So how do we extract salt from this salt water? That is going to be our next challenge. So the next thing that we do is evaporation. So we take the salt water and we heat it. Now as we heat it, what happens? The liquid water gets converted into water vapor and when all the water has evaporated, what is left behind in the pan is the salt. So that's how you can get the salt. So by the end of the process, you have got the sand collected in beaker one and you've got the salt collected in this 
pan. So that's how you can separate a sand and salt mixture. Now you might say that okay, I started with a glass of water. Now while separating all these things, I took a glass of water. Where did that glass of water go? So that glass of water got converted into water vapor. Now if you want to convert this water vapor back into liquid water, what you can do is now this water vapor, some hot air would be present just above this saucepan. So what you do is you take a cold lead a lead over which you have kept some ice to keep it cool so you hold a cold lead here and what happens these water vapor that will condense condensation will happen and that's how liquid water will get collected here so this process which is happening here is evaporation where liquid water is getting converted to water vapor and this process which is happening here or you can say here is nothing but condensation where water vapor is getting converted into liquid water. So this is the entire process. So you see we, we often make use of multiple separation processes to separate a mixture. So to separate a mixture of sand and salt we used uh, sedimentation, decantation, evaporation. So a, a mix of two to three processes together helped in separating the components of sand salt mixture. So one interesting thing that you observe out of this entire process of separation of sand and salt is that the amount of salt that we recover at the end, that is the amount of salt that is left over in this pan is quite less than the amount of salt which was actually present in the mixture. So in the mixture we had salt and sand. But the amount of salt that we received here is much less when compared to the amount of salt which was actually there in that mixture. So that is quite mysterious. So why did that happen? So where is the remaining amount of salt lost? Okay, so in order to understand this mystery, we will first have to talk. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.